Right, over the last few weeks I've um, made several improvements to the MyFed ML7 and the Chinese mini lathe and in this video I'd just like to show you some of those improvements. Um, starting with the um, wick feed oiler that I made for the MyFed ML7. Um, if you saw my video on how to make this one um, you'll see that I had an air hole through the top here at the side which would come out on the inside of the top and that would allow air into the wick feed oiler and the free movement of oil down through and into the machine. And um, at the end of any machining session, if there was any oil left in the oiler, I'd cover that hole up with tape and that would obviously stop the free flow of oil and save whatever oil that was in there. Um, that was very fiddly to do and also the um, tape would often not stick on the side here. So in the end I came up with the idea of making a small valve um, which I can screw down to close at the start of any um, machining just under it about three or four turns which reveals the hole in the side there and the air can go down through and allow that oil to flow. And what I've done is I've included a o-ring in the top now in the top cap just a small thin o-ring at the top which rests down on the polycarbonate tube and when it screws together that pushes tight down on that o-ring and seals that up and that's how the valve works and I found it very effective um, like I say, if there's any oil left in there, I just screw that one down at the end of machining and I'm now saving all that oil that used to go to waste at the end if that side hole was open. And uh, of all the oilers I've ever tried on the MyFed ML7, I've found this one to be the best. It's very reliable, gives a constant um, flow of oil um, in drip form obviously and um, having that valve on there now is going to make the lathe a lot more economical to use. So this is what it looks like now close up. I have the concave oiler on the top here. There's no need to take the cap off to fill up with oil. I can use my ordinary pressure oil can um, the valve I made there is um, just a small piece of bar threaded with a 2BA and then a fine hole drilled up through that and one in through the side. Well I went right the way through and um, if you do make that um, just make sure you drill the side hole a few threads down from the shoulder here and allow for the fibre washer and um, if you don't have it too far down the thread obviously you don't have to unscrew it too much to reveal the um, air hole. So that's the final um, production model of my wick feed oiler. So when I screw it onto the machine there like that I can actually just loosen the um, centre screw and position the um, cap to wherever I want my concave oiler, obviously best at the front and you can position the back one as well so it's easy reach to get to the actual valve to undo it. And in use this um, oiler produces one drop of oil um, about every one minute and 50 seconds. And while I'm on the subject of oilers, um, we come now to the Chinese mini lathe. And you'll remember that I made these um, plugs to go in the top here that I can unscrew 1 8 BSP 
so I can look in and inspect the um, gears inside the headstock of the Chinese mini lathe um, see whether they're lubricated enough if not I can oil them um, on these um, plugs I've included a concave oiler now um, so I can just give it a shot of oil at any time with the pressure can so I can use an ordinary oil can like this on all the oilers or oiling ports on both my lathes and it's obviously best to oil these when the machine's running And you can buy these concave oilers from a company called Lathe Spares UK. Um, I think they're 6mm in diameter on the holding um, diameter. Um, so if you ever fit them, always use a pilot drill first, smaller than the finished diameter. Um, then the 6mm drill. And when you tap them in, you can actually just use a plastic mallet and they'll go in there nice and tight. Next, again on the Chinese mini lathe, on my indexing um, plate at the back here, um, I've numbered up all the holes, um, 24 holes, with a, um, I think it's a 3mm um, stamp. So I've done that nice and neat. And I always start on 24, um, so I don't get mixed up at all and also on the handle that goes in the back of that one for doing tapping and that on the lathe I've um, put a safety light which I can leave go in so I'm always reminded that that handle is in use and there's no uh, way that I can actually start the machine up after using the handle and causing terrible vibration or whatever and these are only um, like silicon lights that you get for cycles you can get them on ebay they're about 2.99 um, made of silicon rubber and um, they have several different modes on them so they just wrap around the handle and hook up there and I'll leave one of those on each of the handles, uh, one for the MyFit ML7 and also for this lathe here. So it's a good safety feature to have if you use a mandrel handle. Another um, upgrade or rather repair I've done in the um, mini lathe is to fit a new tachometer. Um, my last one stopped working and it was the actual pickup assembly in the back of the lathe. One of the um, electrical pins dropped off. Um, I was unable to solder it back on and when I come, uh, contacted the company that bought the lathe from that actual assembly had become obsolete. So in the end I opted to buy um, one of these sets from uh, China, very good quality, um, they're only about £6 and um, I fitted one of these to the MyFit ML7 so I know how good they are and it's um, a magnetic pickup and like I said it's very easy to set up and um, what I did was um, to actually wire it in completely independently from the lathe so it's not actually on the circuit board um, it's got its own um, power supply unit and um, when I turn the lathe on um, I've got the actual tachometer um, adapter into the same um, plug socket so that they actually both come on together 
I think the um, hardest part about this job was actually increasing the um, size of the aperture for the actual um, bigger display um, unit on this one. Um, what I did was just carefully cut out with um, some tin snips and um, filed it out until I got a, a really nice push fit. And I got a bit of polycarbonate over the face of that one just to protect the display. Also you can get these um, tachometers with a display um, in a variety of different colours. My um, last one was red but this one's a nice blue. And you'll find that at the end, when you turn the machine off, there's a bit of a delay before they go back to zero. Um, that is quite normal. And just one other thing about these Chinese tachometers. On the magnetic pickup, you have to make sure that you get the magnet polarity the right way around um, in accordance with this one. Otherwise, you won't get a reading. They do come with a small magnet, um, which I've used actually on my MyFord lathe setup. Um, I was uh, messing about for a long time once, wondering why things didn't work before I realised I had to have the magnet the right way round. So it's actually a thing to worth remembering when you're fitting these. So next on the MyFed ML7 you can see that I've done the numbering on my indexing back plates. i um, done them all the same uh, with a 3mm um, stamp and got those nice and neat. Right, just before I go, I'd just like to show you my new compressor, which I've just bought. Um, it's only £107 from um, AIM Tools in the UK, um, and that's post-free. Um, it's the quietest uh, compressor I've ever had of this type, um, with pistons. Um, so it's got a two-piston um, motor on it. Um, is uh, rated at about 65 decibels. Um, 60 decibels is about that of a electric sewing machine. So this one is very quiet. They say that you could actually use it in a dental practice or whatever. Um, if I start it up, uh, I could actually use it day or night. My last compressor was 90 decibels. I could only use that um, sometimes in the day. And um, 90 decibels, uh, prolonged um, use of that in an area like this one, this 10 by 8 shed, can do um, damage to your ears if you don't use um, ear defenders. Now the um, compressor is fully automatic um, but it didn't come with a regulator so what I've done is I've upgraded it. I've made one of my um, manifolds which I'll be showing how to make on the lathe at some time um, and on this manifold I have a, um, a tap here and a line for dry air. Um, I have a connection here with an automatic oiler for my um, air tools and on this line here quick release again um, I've got that one rigged up so it goes to my other silent compressor which has a um, fridge type compressor on so it's dead silent and then that one's connected up to a um, large spare cylinder at the back of the shed um, so I can have a massive volume of air if I want to but if I'm just using the airline I can shut all that off um, and just have it um, running on this cylinder. And then my um, airline here comes up to my um, regulator, uh, which is on my uh, mounted on the workbench, and that's got the moisture trap.
So there's other people that have um, done unboxing of these on YouTube. Um, I'm not going to start it up this evening um, because um, if I do, it won't do it justice. Uh, the sound is magnified um, on the microphone of the actual um, video camera. But if you know someone with an ordinary electric sewing machine, a home electric sewing machine, um, this produces about the same sound as one of those. So if you don't want to disturb your neighbours or cause damage to your ears, it's worth buying one of these. And this is just another small project I'm working on at the moment. This was another noisy 90 decibel um, compressor, an old one. But I um, took the end cap off here and had a look inside with a torch and the steel looked as good as new. And it's very thick and I thought, well, I'll make this one into a nice little silent compressor. I've um, re-sprayed the tank silver, it was red. I've bolted this um, plate, um, aluminium plate on the top and drilled it um, to accept a fridge compressor which I'll be mounting on there. I'm waiting for an automatic switch which I bought cheaply on eBay and um, a uh, little regulator and then I'm going to bolt it all together and I hope to show this one at a later day.